Thanks for joining us this morning. So I'd like to welcome our special guest this morning, Henry Dung. Henry is a very old friend of ours at Mia Kuchina Food Tours. Good morning, Henry. Oh, good morning, uh, Mel. Good morning, everybody. Um, enjoy uh, with Mel this morning. <laughs> welcome. Thank you. I know how difficult it is with technology. And we would normally be on a food tour with you this morning out in Cabramatta, but it isn't the case. Yeah, I, I, I am a, a dinosaur of uh, technology. So. That's okay. We've done it this morning. So thank you. Thank you so much for your time. All right. Thank you very much. So just to welcome everyone, to let everyone know, I'm Melissa Donport from Mia Cucina Food Tours. I uh, run food tours all throughout Sydney. Over the isolation period, I created some um, Google food maps. So if you're going on a road trip, if you're heading to the Southern Highlands, there's a great road trip that you can explore. It's on the Google Maps. You plug your phone into the car and up pop 70 desti destinations, vineyards, cafes, beautiful bakeries, chocolate shops, the whole thing, everything's there, all your research is done for you. So that's a little on me and me a Cucina. Uh, Henry is a retired successful businessman. Uh, he ran, Henry will speak further on, uh, he had a, um, a business in Cabramatta he owned the local cafe where all the business over the years was held in Henry's Cafe. And uh, to let you know about Denera, for those of you that don't know this site that we're on, it's an online resource for material which sort of came from isolation, the brainchild of Danny Grimberg, where you can source live talks like today, videos, movies, on-demand section, podcasts, stories, movies. It's a wonderful resource with so much information, uh, not only in food, in music and theatre, uh, in the arts, in religion, spirituality. It's really worthwhile visiting danira.org.au for more information. So to start this morning's proceedings. Um, I'd like to talk really about the Vietnamese community before I take you to Cabramatta and show you the wonderful food and the vibrant city that it is. I think it's really important to think about and to have a better understanding of the Vietnamese community and why they became refugees and why they did flee Vietnam. Now, Henry, you have an incredible story of survival. And I believe so. you believe so. And um, I'd love you to share your story today with our guests. Tell me, uh, you were a young boy. At what age do you remember that there was uh, problems yeah. in Vietnam? I, uh, I was about 13 uh, years old uh, on uh, 1979 when my uh, family uh, tried to uh, plan in and exit from Vietnam uh, to find freedom. Uh, on the another homeland. Uh, uh, yeah, firstly, uh, I think my name is Henry. I, I live uh, uh, in Carmara. Um, uh, and uh, I'm one of the um, survival of the boat, uh, the boat person. Um, so today I'm going to tell uh, the tale of how uh, my family, uh, especially my father, uh, was planning to uh, escape from Vietnam. Um, I started the story in uh, in nineteen seventy 
So tell me, Henry, what business was your father in? My father was uh, the uh, the veteran uh, of the, um, the, the, the 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 U.S. Uh, South Vietnamese government. Uh, so under their uh, 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 law, that whoever worked for um, uh, U.S. or South Vietnamese government. Uh, have to be like um, um, punished or maybe uh, murder them in a slowly way without the condemnation of the uh, the human rights uh, uh, ad uh, advocacy. Yeah, and uh, so uh, the only way that uh, you know, uh, we, 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 we can't live under that regime and we got to find ways to find freedom somewhere else. Right. Uh, so Henry, yeah. your father in 1979 decided he didn't want to be a part of that communist regime and he decided to leave Vietnam. Oh, uh, well, if we, we live under uh, their regime, I, I mean, it's not only my father, but 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 uh, uh, but our sibling and mom will slowly uh, uh, die in a year or two anyway, because uh, uh, that that that's their intention to 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 murder uh, uh, 
whoever worked for it, the, the U.S. or of the U.S. government. So, right. Uh, they, uh, if you can live uh, under that um, circumstance. Right. So, so your father worked for the U.S. government, and he knew that there wasn't much of a future for you or your family. Henry, can I just pause you there to let everyone know that Henry's image has frozen on the Zoom and um, so we only have the audio of Henry, so I apologise for that. So Henry, your father knew you had to flee because he really had no other choice. Yeah, we, we, um, we just like end of the road. We got nowhere to go and uh, I, I'm just planning to uh, to buy freedom from somewhere else is it's, it's not like at least for uh, the future of 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 of, of, of this children. Uh, forget about you know um uh, uh he, he realized that he's not going to survive uh under the, the regime so at least you know if we die or uh if we got a, a chance to get out of Vietnam and buy somewhere else, um, at least you can say he chewed. Right, at least he tried. So, um, so tell, so, so uh, it, yeah, explain to us how that happened. So, uh, my father was planning um, for, he, um, he, 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 um, he, he bought the, uh, a small uh, fishing bowl it's got him about, I think, 12 ounces of gold of that time. And, um, uh, and, um, uh, she's like, uh, you got to do something, uh, for a living so that the government not send you to, to the, uh, you know, to the um, new economy job again. That means my father, he pretend to take us to the boat and, you know, uh, go out there and do fishing while we, uh, we, we um, try to uh, navigate and try to, 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 to you know, to, uh, to find way how to walk the shore safely. Right. In, in, in what, right. Yeah. So, so um, in 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 on the July of 1979, uh, we we started um, a hash journey uh, to the uh, infinite ocean to fight uh, freedom. Right. So you got your boat. You got your boat. You gathered your food. And uh, how many were on the boat with you? How many people? Well. On uh, that night, uh, it's about 7 p.m. when the spot is dark, and uh, we we hide the uh, the uh, a little uh, a little uh, like uh, about a two meter uh, boat uh, we call a taxi boat to carry uh, um, people to our you know. Uh, uh, fishing bowl so that we can uh, start the journey. But uh, but only uh, four of them they get they reach to our boat and the other eight is uh, uh, disappear because uh, unfortunately on that night with the uh, the propaganda of the uh, the a naval, uh, communist naval ship. Um, they circulate around and looking for people who um, escape uh, from Vietnam. So um, our boat is packed only uh, 22 people instead of 50. So um, most of the, luckily that we all got our, our family in that boat. Uh, a little boat. Right. So, you know, uh, in the, on that day, 
me, uh, my, I, I got two brothers and two sisters and my parents, so my family upset. And uh, plus my cousin and all the other cousins together, uh, the 22 people on the boat. Right. So you had a separate taxi boat and on that taxi boat was the fuel for your journey. Yes, uh, it's not, uh, not only the fuel, uh, that fuel is the, the, the diesel. Uh, that uh, we work out maybe uh, around uh, hundreds of uh, containers. That will get us enough to get to Hong Kong. Enough to get to Hong Kong. But because they uh, saw all the signs everywhere that if you get caught, that you will be... They, yeah, they probably get, uh, to get caught. If they get caught, they in jail uh, uh, around five to ten years. Right. Yeah, um, so uh, your so taxi they, boat... They head, yeah. to, they head back to the shore. Um, uh, we only get about, say, um, uh, 25% of our fuel. Right, so you had 25% yeah, no. of your fuel on your boat with you. Your taxi yeah. boat had gone yeah, back to not, shore. And we don't have enough water and food as well. Because we, we, we cannot store food and water in, the, uh, in our fishing boats because they would, we, we have in, 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 uh, inspection of the government at any time. We, we uh, have a more food or more water. That means we got a restaurant without any, um, you know, further, uh, you know. Uh, that's why. That's why. The, that's the reason why we get higher uh, the, um, uh, the, the the more taxi boat to carry everything for us. Right. On that day. Right. So when the taxi boat headed back to shore, because they were nervous that they would be caught, you were left just with whatever you had on your boat. Exactly right. Um, and so tell me, how long did you survive in the ocean? Or well, first of all, how did you get through past the Vietnam border? Well, uh, we, we are still like uh, anxiously waiting in the uh, water for the marble um, to supply us. But um, uh, um, unfortunately, it is that uh, uh, there are no more folks coming out, and we worry that we going to be at rest. And, and, and if we are at rest, because they, a lot of neighbors did, they circulate nearby as well. And so if we get caught, the whole family will get shot. Right. Uh, our family is, is, is under uh, suspicion of uh, being from being armed. Um, because my father was um, in the making of like uh, escape from Vietnam for more than a year, and then the local government realized that, but they got no evidence to arrest us. That's why they uh, they forced my father to shy uh, and help him. Uh, if the family gets caught from uh, police uh, to escape from Vietnam, uh, the whole family met, um, will get shot instead of attending like, jail like the others. Right. So it's not just your father, it's the whole family that will either be murdered and or sent to jail. And, and um, my father already decided that, but he, and my father did not say they see kill our family anyway, because if you not say, they say, oh, you're planning. Yes. So let's get from you know. Yes. So you've got to, you got to start it. Yeah. So tell me what happened when you were on the water. How long did we you? We the water and uh, we ended uh, uh, waiting, but no boat come out. And then uh, um, come to the point of no return. Um, uh, we rather uh, head to the ocean with no idea where we are going. Uh, hopefully, like, like just like uh, get to the uh, international water captain so we can get rescue uh, from uh, any cargo ship or... Right, so know, how long ship. how long did it take you to get into international waters? Uh, with uh, which, uh, almost like one and... Uh, 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 we start a 
at about 8 p.m. Uh, uh, that night, and uh, the, the, the next night we get there. And um, and the, the night we get there, we only get maybe uh, four containers of uh, diesel left for our boat. And then if we keep going, we run out of fuel. And then, you know, with a little bit of wind, we'll, 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 we'll subside our boat uh, in any time. Right. So we, if we keep uh, the minimal fuel to, to keep the boat running, so we, we, we at least like escape from the, the, the giant wave of the ocean. Right. And uh, uh, at night time, at, uh, 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 we we so lucky at that night when we start like pick up all our clothes at possible and we make uh, a, a flame. We you make a, a fire. Henry, I'm just, there's people who have just joined. For those that have just joined, we're speaking with Henry Jong, who was a Vietnamese boat person. He fled persecution in Vietnam, fled the communist regime, and he's sh Henry sharing his story on his boat trip, fleeing Vietnam. And at the moment, he was just saying that he's in the international waters, they decided to take off all their clothes and burn them to make a large fire. Why did you do that, Henry? Because at night, hopefully, uh, some um, uh, international, international casual or any uh, ship will pass by that passage and see that flame and will save us. Um, that, that's what we, uh, we, we, one of our plans when we listen, uh, we, we, we secretly like hiding somewhere to listen to the uh, uh, VOA. Uh, that's what they advise. They, yeah. If you go to, uh, at night, you go to you play up some uh, uh, flame or, or fire so that the, uh, you know, even the ocean is, is vastly and, and uh, infinitely and very dark. Yes. Uh, so hopefully someone will, uh, some ship pass by and see we'll the see you. and they, they rescue us. Right. And did a ship see you, Henry? Yeah, uh, well, well uh, luckily, like, uh, one of the uh, Netherlands, uh, uh, a cargo ship will pass that. Uh, but before that, so many ships would pass, but they're not, they not stop. <laughs> they're not stop. Uh, they, they not they not only stop, but they produce a big wave, nearly sting our boat as well. Right. And uh, finally, uh, we we uh, one of the um, the Netherlands uh, ship uh, try to uh, get closer to our boat, and they um, they 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 stop by and uh, they. They um, try to communicate with our boat to um, to see whether what we need and something like that. Right. And, uh, and during that planning, we were going to find someone who speaks English very well. Which is my uncle. He was a U.S. woman. He English. He was very good. So he tried to to uh, negotiate with uh, the uh, the. Uh, with the captain from that uh, cargo uh, ship. So he tried to uh, get into that ship and then he planning to stay over there. He's not coming back. He, he, he was there. He's the assistant for captain. He's not going to make the boat. So eventually uh, they had to rescue our, uh, our people from the, the boat. Right. But that, but when they um, try to communicate with uh, the Netherlands government, and eventually uh, the government will not let us on their ship because they have, uh, they have a whole the responsibility that they have to take us to their uh, country. 
Right. So... So the Netherlands um, ship wouldn't allow you on this ship, but they did provide you with water and some food. Well, and, uh, and then uh, with that long uh, of negotiation, uh, about an hour, uh, it did go nowhere. And uh, uh, they finally um, asked us whether we did something that they can help us or they could do, uh, to leave us right away because they can't wait anymore. And then we got no choice. So we said, okay, can you give us some food and water and also fuel uh, uh, so we can continue our journey to uh, some way? Right. So, Henry, we're running out of time here. I just wanted to ask you they give you food and water and some clothing. You're back. Yes, but, uh, they, they, they give us food, water, yeah. and, and, uh, and fuel. People are finding it hard to hear you, so I'm going to have to just uh, briefly end with your story. The fuel that you were given on the large ship didn't work for your small boat. It got you a couple of more days, and then finally you ran out of fuel. Your boat was yeah. just moving yeah, in. Why, why the, the engine is damaged and stopped uh, uh, at that night? We pulled together, uh, um, we, we pulled close together in the cabin and, uh, you know, we start like uh, a briefly um, say, um, maybe uh, we know that a big mistake to, to escape, there, there's no chance of, of surviving. So right. we, got, we pulled together into the cabin and write out our name on the list. Uh, we uh, just, uh, you know, uh, throw in the bottle with the lid on and throw in the ocean. Hopefully, if someone uh, cap that, that bottle and let, let our family know that we all, you know, uh, uh, die in the ocean. Right. So basically, everyone sent messages in bottles, dropped it into the ocean, and you really thought you were going to die. Your boat overnight drifted. You finally woke up in the morning, Henry, or was it at night time where you felt some banging or something? And so where when, and when, when my my father and the mechanic tried to fix that engine, and we spent another uh, a ten hour, um, and we went uh, to uh, somewhere. Uh, it's just like we know that we get somewhere. Because our boat uh, was on, uh, you know, on the sand of some uh, remote uh, beach somewhere. Right. 
Henry, I'm going to have to, Henry, sorry, I'm going to have to stop it there because people can't hear you. But I want to thank you for your time this morning and I will finish your and share your story. I appreciate your time very much this morning, Henry. Yes, uh, uh, well, thank you very much. Uh, I'm sorry about the technology. But That's I, I all right. That, uh, we, we can have a, 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 a better, um, uh, um, you know, a meeting at our cafe. Yes, uh, we would like to time. meet you. That's a really lovely yeah. idea. We will organise to meet you in real life and we'll be able to share this story again. Yeah, I think after the first of July, we start together right now. Fabulous. Okay. <clears throat> All right, Henry, take care. Thank you so very much. Yeah, well, uh, thank you very much. I, I'm really sorry about all the technology. That's all right. Uh, That's all right. And thank then, you, Henry. All right. We'll speak you soon. Have a, a good day. And then uh, uh, we, we do it a lot better when <laughs> we go to come out. In thank real life. Much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Henry. Bye-bye. Right. Right. Sorry, guys. Yeah, Henry uh, and technology, it is really difficult. It really is something very special to hear. I think it's really important to understand the Vietnamese refugees, where they have come from. Henry has an incredible story. It's, you know, I know I've heard it many times. It is very heartwarming and it's, a, it's an important message that we have to hear. They ended up landing in the Philippines. They just could not believe their luck. They stayed there for a couple of years. They waited to get their visas. Henry and all the young kids learned English while they were there. They were offered visas to America. They all waited for Australian visas. They arrived in Australia and, um, and built this incredible community out in Cabramatta. So now I'm going to show you. Cabra Matter and a video it goes for about five minutes and let us start this video. Good morning, welcome to the Vietnamese community here in Cabra Matter. Today we're going to go on a virtual tour of Cabra Matter. I want to show you all the best laneways, the best street food in the shops that you would otherwise never have found. Let's go. Sticky rice. Yep. Sweet potato. Yeah. Taro. Banana chips in the background. Yep. That's the sweet beef. Traditional Vietnamese. Uh, the salty one. Yeah. Sweet pork. Yeah. And the banana fritter, beautiful. And the sweet potato. The cassava. So these are traditional Vietnamese snacks. This is a banana chip. Crunchy, really dry. It's a semi-sweet. Highlight of this little shop is this dried beef in a sweet type of syrup. Here we are at the local Asian supermarket. There's always stock to the brim. Wherever you look, wherever you turn, there's just boxes everywhere. Look at all the selection of soya milks, all the different flavours, fresh noodles. Look at these beautiful fresh noodles. This is the best chili. It's a vinegary chili which I use in when I make my dumplings. I actually add it to everything. Here are all the packets of dried with the rose petals. Oops. Um, down here the dried mushrooms, all the different mushrooms. Look at the scar and eggs. Look how fresh that is. Hello, how are you? Uh, is that uh, oxtail. oxtail? And you use that for stews? Chuck steak. The 
look at this. Look at the, the cow, the tongue. Look at that. That's fresh tongue. Amazing. Look here, you've got livers and kidneys and you've got chicken hearts. You've got giblets at the back. This store, it's a real wicker-brac of everything. I love these brooms. These are all just, um, there's a fine one and a thick one and they are so good for sweeping up porches. And just have a look in here, have a look at, seriously, plastics and foils and disposables and vases and glasses. And you know, everyone rinses and washes in bowls. Always a visit in any Asian community is the local smokehouse. Check out the freshly made Peking duck. Have a look behind me here. Chicken seed, all the organs, everything is cooked. Every part of the animal is used. Peking duck, soy chicken, chicken wings, chicken feed. What's really special about this smoke house? You actually will see here, this is where the ducks are prepared. This is where all the animals are prepared. Look at this butcher here, he's carving. Hello, how are you? In the back there, those hot is where the ducks are. That's where all the ducks are, the Peking ducks. Look at this guy here in the front. There's the paper. There's the butcher carving up the carpet. So traditionally, you go and see there's the doctor in the background. Hello. Hello. How are you? Yeah. That's good. We've just come to have a look. <laughs> it's fabulous. So what happens, you visit the doctor, he takes your pulse, and then he writes out a recipe. All the ingredients are dried, bark and bits of fish and... And then with the recipe, all written in Chinese, the pharmacist here, she will um, take the recipe and they weigh it on these scales. Look at this, this is um, a recipe here. And then what you do is you boil it. You boil the mixture and then you have to drink the water of the herbs and the bark. Not so much Vietnamese, it's a Chinese doctor. There is the uh, prescription here. Here's the traditional Vietnamese drink. You choose between a whole lot of these jellies. You can see that uh, taro and noodles and sweet potato and red beans and green beans and corn and barley and tofu and light cheese and jackfruit. And you fill it up into these cups and you add some ice cream and they seal it with a, a lid and it's a very traditional Vietnamese drink. His local fish shop, he's got some great stuff here. Look at the sea brim, $14 barramundi, it's massive. Look at the kingfish. Look how fresh this silver perch is. Look at the sheen on that skin. Hard to see here. The snapper, the flathead. Look at that flathead. $13 a kilo. It's the local market. Honestly, it is like being in Vietnam for the day. 
chicken and egg and this is very traditional of what people buy to eat for lunch their prawn and crab and rice then you've got a selection of these desserts and dishes they're flavored noodles this is my favorite this is like a soy sweet little dumpling and a sugar custard there's an egg custard also traditional in the Vietnamese culture are fruit juices. Everyone has a juice. Watermelon, orange, you know, apples and plus the kale. And then you add uh, all the different fruits, the jackfruits. Selling her homegrown lemongrass, a couple of walking sticks. Is it a gentleman? Look at that lemongrass, it's beautiful. Look at this finely chopped. Hello. Hello. A lemongrass. Lemongrass. So that was just a little view of Cabramatta. And um, a Henry is really upset that he was unable to be um, seen here. So he does send his apologies. Um, just to mention, while I am speaking, you can send me a little chat. Send me, ask me a question down the bottom of your screen. There are questions that are coming in here. Um, Jenny says, Henry sounds like a lovely man. He really is a beautiful man, Hen uh, Jenny. And um, he has uh, an incredible story. And I think he really, really enjoys sharing his story. I'm sure it's very therapeutic for him. And um, he is very proud Vietnamese Australian. So um, in the beginning of that video, you saw me standing under some Vietnamese Chinese arches and they were renamed Freedom Plaza. What happened when a lot of the Vietnamese families arrived in Australia, three generations, the parents went to work, both the mother and the father, they, you know, all worked two or three jobs. So the kids were at school, they were learning English. They didn't really want to know about their Vietnamese background or maybe they were too young and didn't remember it. So then they were left at home really unattended with the grandparents who didn't speak English. And um, Cabramatta became a haven back in the 80s, the 90s, it really was quite a rough suburb. Sometimes today, if you say to people, I'm going to Cabramatta, people go, oh, you're going to Cabramatta? Because it did have quite a bad name for many years. It was a really quick way to, for young kids to make money was through drugs. And um, it was quite a rough, it was a very rough place. Not only if you were local in Cabramatta, uh, the older Australian community, but also for Henry tells the story how it was very frightening for him and his family. It did eventually, it was all cleaned up. There's an incredible story document, documentary on this story. It's called Once Upon a Time in Cabramatta. You can Google it. It's an SBS two-part series and it takes you back through the history of um, how the Vietnamese community, how they cleaned up the whole suburb. And then it now is really a wonderful, beautiful, secure, you know, place to visit. And, um, and as Henry said, we would love you to come on our food tour and come and meet Henry at some stage. So I do have some recipes. Um, 
yes, we have recipes, Nessie, that, um, that are local and we'll um, happy to share those. We do have a couple of recipes up on our on my website. It's miacucina.com.au. I'm going to type that in here, and you'll you'll be able to um, see some recipes. I posted a lovely recipe actually the other day. If you missed it here on the Denira project, I ran a pickling cucumber workshop. I also pickled some Vietnamese carrots and uh, daikon, the white radish. And that recipe is up on the website. Uh, what I did now want to show you, I've got some lovely photographs that I want to run through. Uh, just to recap, it's called Once Upon a Time in Cabramatta. And it's a really, I think, important document to have a better understanding of the community. Um, thank you, Venetia. We would love to hear in person, yes, his story. It is a beautiful story. Okay, so now I'm going to share with you some photos of, um, of out in Cabramatta. So uh, our first stop on the food tour is a traditional Vietnamese coffee. And this cafe is a very famous cafe. It was owned by Henry for many, many years. And um, Henry's uncle owned the cafe before him and his uncle's son is Luke Ningen. Uh, Luke, who is an SBS food presenter, he, as a little boy, ran around this cafe and it has really very special memories for Henry. This Vietnamese um, coffee is super sweet, full of condensed milk and very traditional. Uh, this is, you saw in the video, these are banana fritters. Uh, they do it with taro and they do it with other vegetables. They use the plantain banana. It's quite a firm banana and in a batter, it's not that healthy, but it's absolutely delicious. The Vietnamese are huge into their sweets. This is also something you see everywhere. It's fresh sugarcane juice. So you can see this sugarcane machine. You feed the sugarcane through this barrel and it extracts down below the sugarcane juice. And uh, with a little bit of ice, sometimes they serve it with a little bit of orange juice. Super sweet, but very delicious. This is one of my favourite, favourite, favourite foods. They are sticky rice dumplings. So it's a rice um, coating, a rice dough, and inside it's filled with either bamboo shoots, um, all vegetarian um, bamboo shoots. Sometimes it's shallots or mushrooms. They are made by a family. They quite often, the family will go home to Vietnam. They just close the little shutter and they won't open for a month. So it's always hit and miss if they're going to be there. They are sensational. Everyone knows in uh, the Vietnamese green mango salad, this is Super delicious. Uh, quite often I'll head out to Cabramatta just to grab some of these for takeaway. You can see the green mango shredded, the carrot, the tomato, lots of lemon juice and tamarind and ginger in that. This is something that I love to always show my clients. It is fresh bamboo shoot, which has been lightly preserved in a brine, which they sell in the supermarket. Uh, what I love about the Vietnamese culture is their sticky rice. So this lady, she, she knows how much I love this. If you can see down the bottom of the image, it looks like a, a cloth that you put over like a mattress protector. And in there is the sticky rice and it's sort of, um, kept in a warm place and as they need the warm sticky rice they pull it out of this little blanket it's got a lid 
which they keep on top of it. And sticky rice is different to normal rice that you buy in the supermarket. It actually is a glutinous rice. This is also delicious. It's another snack. It's dried persimmon. It is very much Japanese and Korean, um, but they do sell a lot of this out in Cabramatta. The dragon fruit sitting beside the limes. It's just such a beautiful image to see. They love their dragon fruits in a lot of their drinks and fruit plates. There's a lot of street food, a lot of street vendors, a lot of elderly people. They try to clean it up at one stage, but really it, the elderly people like to be busy and to be doing something. So they just sell their homegrown lemongrass and chilies you saw in the video the man selling his um, lemongrass I always like to support the locals for two or three dollars he gave me some chopped up lemongrass this is jackfruit which has been peeled there we are again with our iced coffees uh, these were beautiful. They were freshly dried sultanas on stalks, which looks so beautiful on a cheese plate. You do find a lot of things out further out of Sydney in the markets that you may not find here in Sydney. This is a speciality dessert Vietnamese enjoy. You can see these little handmade pandan baskets and they fill it with sticky rice. The one in the back had like a creamed corn underneath with the coconut cream on the top. Uh, these are absolutely delicious. They're not super sweet, but they are sticky and glutinous. And you can see all around the background here, a lot of elderly have their trolleys and they just sell what they grow in their properties. This man was selling his chocos. We had to buy his chocos. This lady is selling, look at her, they're Vietnamese cucumbers in the plastic bags. They're super long and super crunchy. They are delicious. She has their um, some garlic chives that she's hanging on to and are also some flowers they almost look like daffodils there in the background you saw in the video the Peking duck I know it's not Vietnamese but it's super delicious and we always have some of that on our tour um, another really sweet treat is the pandan jelly this is made with the pandan leaves and with taro and um, sitting there with freshly grated coconut is delicious. Uh, this is another one. They are um, rice balls, which are sitting in a beautiful ginger syrup and pandan balls, and that's served with coconut cream. There's the doctor. If you've ever had psoriasis or something that you have never been able to treat, with Western doctors, this is a really good opportunity. Unfortunately. Mostly we do use Eastern medicine when nothing else works. You'll always be able to pick up some bargains out there. The durian fruit is that very smelly fruit. It's for a very refined palate that you need to have either been brought up with. And this was the other day I saw fresh tamarind, which is absolutely incredible to find fresh tamarind in, um, in Sydney. These were those beautiful drinks that we saw earlier on the video filled with lots of different flavors and sweet jellies and topped with coconut cream. This is another one of my favorites. Um, it's star fruit and there's a little sachet sitting under the star fruit and it's a combination of sugar, salt and chili and you slice up the star fruit and dip it into the little mix. Uh, this is the banana chips and the beef jerky and the banana fritter. Always a winner in my family. And uh, at the end of the tour, we always have a delicious lunch. This is a traditional crispy Vietnamese crepe. It's filled with vegetables, bean sprouts, mushrooms, lots of herbs and a really super crispy egg sort of crepe on the outside. 
traditional Vietnamese spring rolls, which we all seem to be enjoying these days. This was a delicious salt and pepper fried tofu with a really yummy mix sort of crumb sitting on the top. Another one of my favorites, salt and pepper fried quail. Beautifully prepared with lots of different sauces. You can see the pickled uh, carrot in the background. That recipe you'll find on my website. We've seen this before. It's the sticky rice balls in the ginger sauce. Again, this has got the taro on the bottom with the coconut cream on the top, delicious desserts. Uh, lots of tapioca in, uh, used as ingredients. Uh, that's the durian fruit again and the dragon fruit. Guava is also available. The rambutan, which is very interesting. I was doing some research. It means messy hair in Vietnamese. They are available all year round, actually. This is what the tamarind looks like once it has dried. It's a delicious snack. You can buy it often in the supermarkets just as a paste. It has got seeds in it, so it's quite fiddly. These are the longan, the fruit that I showed you. They, um, they mean dragon eyes. The mango steens are always available and delicious. Um, and the translation is breast milk because they are very smooth and creamy and uh, delicious. And there is Henry in uh, one of our food tours a couple of years ago. So, um, okay. Did you, were you able to see the images? I hope you could see those images. We do have some questions. Um, so um, I'd like to thank you. Thank you for joining us. I'm sorry with the technology with Henry, he really does apologize. And um, uh, what I did want to say was uh, you can reach out to me at any time, either through the Danira site or through miacucina.com.au. Uh, I wanted to let you know that coming up on the Danira, we have a few things happening. Tonight, there's a rerun of the um, baking babka with Betty, with Ilan Kidron and Lisa Goldberg. If you didn't see that, that's it showing again tonight. On Monday, Lisa Goldberg and I are making glue vine and we're making some delicious um, nibblies to have with them. Lisa's making anchovy twists and I'm making a wonderful cheese olive wrapped in a katafi pastry. Um, and there's so much more happening on the Dinera project. If you want any more information on the Vietnamese food tour, you can email me info at miacucina.com.au. Again, thank you everyone for joining us this morning. Henry really sends his best to everyone. Thanks for joining us guys and we'll see you next time.